Hey, Teddy, I was just curious as to like where you quarantined and what you did in terms of workouts and maybe what you did away from workouts to pass the time over these last few months. Yeah, I was uh, during quarantine, I was in Minneapolis and uh, for workouts, mostly at a small gym just at my house there. So, uh, I mean, I had some basics. I got a Peloton, dumbbells, bands, BOSU ball, uh, stuff like that. Played some tennis, basketball. Um, yeah, whatever else we were allowed to do outside. Next question is from Seth Rohrball. Go ahead, Seth. Uh, Teddy, to kind of piggyback off of that, um, you're a guy who's very committed to your craft. You were out here for 20, 25 minutes working on face-offs. Um, just, I, I, did he just drive you crazy, I guess, not being able to work on the little parts of your game like that over the past four months? Uh, yeah, a little bit for sure. I don't know if I've ever been off the ice for, for as long as I was during quarantine there. Um, but, I mean, I guess, you know, everyone was in the same boat and the world was kind of in a crazy place as it is now. So that's there's obviously times like that where you can't really do anything about it. You just gotta uh, make it work with what you have and um, try to find ways to kind of do things to improve away from the ice as much as they could. Next question is from Jenna Harner. Go ahead, Jenna. Has there been a noticeable difference in the intensity of these practices the last couple of days? I mean, for us, we can kind of see it, but for you guys, is it noticeably different or is it just kind of, you know, hey, we're going back out there. We're trying to push it to the limit to get as prepared as we can. Uh, like, are you talking about like the progression from day to day or like compared to the skates we were having before? Yeah, like the day to day progression. Um, yeah, I think obviously even from the skates that we were all here before for kind of uh, the small group skates, like the intensity picked up a lot. And, um, you know, once we kind of got the plan and the layout and the schedule of when we're going to start playing and stuff, you have a date kind of circled on the calendar and something to work for, something to look forward to once it was confirmed that we're going to play. So I think that kind of energizes everyone. And, um, you know, we were kind of in this uh, limbo for a while, not sure if we were going to play or not. So once it was finalized, I think that brought up the intensity once we were out here for, you know, full training camp and then day to day, obviously guys are getting their, you know, more and more into shape and feeling better and better out there, more and more comfortable with the thought, um, getting into flow of things. And, you know, I think as a team, we're progressing pretty well right now and getting better from one day to the next. And, and that's kind of the way we want to keep it going. Next question is from uh, Dejan. Go ahead, Dejan. Teddy, watching you try to win face-offs with the knob of your stick out here for a few minutes, I can't help but ask if you've ever actually been forced to try something like that in a game, and what's the advantage to it? Uh, no, obviously I haven't really done that in a game. Um, the advantage is just obviously, you know, compared to a blade, you have a lot less uh, of your stick on the ice, so, you know, the timing becomes important. I think it's just a small little drill just to um, – get your timing back as far as like meeting the puck at the right time when it hits the ice. And um, it's obviously a little harder to do with your knob and we haven't really taken face offs for a while. So um, just something to get the timing back and, and kind of um, get settled into the back taking draws again. Next question is from Michelle. Go ahead, Michelle. Hey, Teddy, you guys were just about to get Zach back on your line before, and then the pause happened. I mean, just how's it been to have him back and reunited with you guys? And just what are you hoping to recapture once this um, playoffs get started? Yeah, it's it's been great having him back, and obviously we missed him, you know, out there as a line and as a team. And um, I think as far as when we get back, we you know we want to bring the energy, um, you know, outwork the other team, kind of recapture that that game that we had when we were at our best during the regular season obviously we had our up in the regular season too but um i think we're in the we're, we're at our best we're supporting each other all over the ice we're hard to play against we're reliable defensively and and with our work and, and you know good decisions and supporting each other in the offensive zone i think we created a lot of chances and um contribute on the offensive end as much as we can next question is from josh go ahead josh 
Hey, Teddy, I know you've been at the pro level for a handful of years now, but obviously first full NHL season uh, and guys talk all the time about, you know, the need for consistency in their game. I'm just curious now playing at this level full time. Are there areas that you've pinpointed that you feel like you need to be more consistent in uh, just to kind of better yourself as a player? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, you know, you always want to get better in all areas of your game, but I think as far as like um, consistency, I, I think it's, you know, generating scoring chances and, and getting good looks at the net, you know, consistently, I think throughout the year, I've had games, you know, where I've had, um, you know, up to five, five, maybe six shots a game. And then a lot of games where I had maybe zero or, or one, one shot on net, not a lot of offensive looks. So I think just, um, you know, maybe when you're not feeling your best or, or you don't have the energy, just finding ways to, to kind of make up with that, with decision making and finding yourself in good areas and making good reads. And then, I think another one's kind of for my game that's that's biggest face offs is um you know consistently trying to be above that fifty percent mark. Next question is from Seth. Go ahead, Seth. Uh Teddy, last year you got only you, you only got into one playoff game. Uh this year it seems like it's maybe a little bit different for you. How much more secure or, or confident do you feel in your place in the team and having a role uh compared to maybe a year ago or you know as of last playoffs, I guess. Uh, I think obviously, you know, it's a little different situation. Haven't been here, haven't been here longer, and a um, little bit different regular season for me this year compared to last, obviously. But I think, you know, you're never really secure, and, um, you know, competition's really high um, throughout this team, and obviously, great players down in Wilkesbury, and uh, everyone's kind of chomping at the bit to get in there. So I don't, I don't think really your place is ever secure. And, because there's always some someone fighting to take your place. So, and um, you know, the other side of that is obviously I, I'm kind of fighting to take other guys' spots too, um, higher up in the lineup, and, and everyone's battling for ice time. So I think there's always that kind of can competition within. So um, I mean, I do think you know, obviously my role has been a little bit different this past year, but I don't think that guarantees me anything going forward. And I think. You know, you're always judged on your last game or your last practice, and and ultimately that's what's going to play into the decision of, of uh, you know, your spot going forward. We have a couple more. Um, Dayon, go ahead. Teddy, when you look at that development that you had, and you look at the way that your line has come together, um, how much does it mean to you guys that it's everybody's lines seem to change. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's wingers here, there's changes and yours has never changed. How much does it mean to you that the coaching staff has just said, you know what, we don't touch those three guys. Um, I mean, I think, I think that's a good sign. Obviously that means we're doing something right for them to keep us together this long. And, um, you know, I think we kind of rely on each other for that sometimes. And, um, when, when one of us is, you know, maybe struggling a little bit, the other two guys, you know, pick that guy up and, um, obviously we, we, we've learned what each other are like on the ice pretty well and, and to make reads off each other and know where each other are going to be so we can support each other better. And, um, that's kind of helped, you know, building that chemistry over time has definitely helped, I think. But, um, like I said, I mean, I, I don't think there's any guarantees going forward. And I think each game we got to, you know, prove ourselves over and over again to, um, stick together and, and keep our spots and hopefully f keep fighting for, for more ice time. Okay, the last one's from Michelle. Go ahead, Michelle. Hey, Teddy, this is a non-hockey related question, but I was just wondering what you did for haircuts during quarantine. I know you're a guy that usually gets it pretty regularly. So were you able to keep up with that or did things get bad there for uh, for a while? Uh, no, for a while, I actually, I didn't get a haircut the whole time, um, you know, until we got back here and, and things eased up a little bit. But yeah, for a while, I didn't have a haircut, just kind of Growing it out, see where it went. I actually got a little practice myself. I gave my brother a haircut, so um, th that was a little new thing I tried. It was pretty fun. So, um, but as far as me, I I didn't get one for for three three or four months. There. How did it go? The haircut you gave him? Um, pretty good, actually. You know, it was kind of it was a bit harder than I thought it was going to be, but it turned out good. You know, he was proud to rock. <laughs>